Christ to the Nations and the Nations to the Church. Daily Devotions from Lutheran Hour Ministries. Friday, May 10th, 2024. Unforecastable. I'm Pastor Michael Ziegler, speaker on the Lutheran Hour, and this devotion pairs with this weekend's Lutheran Hour message, which can be found at lutheranhour.org. The text is Acts chapter 9, verse 31, which says, So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. In May of 2001, it snowed in Colorado, where I was living at the time. A surprise blizzard dropped five or six inches of fresh, unforecasted powder on the campus of the school I was attending. I was a senior in college, getting ready to graduate, and with finals, graduation requirements, plans piling up, the tasks seemed never-ending. But then it all just stopped. Right in the middle of the week, a gift from the heavens above snow in May. Classes were canceled, plans upended, schedules confounded, and we were like kids again, called into something we could neither control nor resist. Falling snow is a good example of uncontrollability. We have a hard time forecasting it, and when it comes, we can never really get a hold of it. Try to store some in the freezer. It stops being snow and turns to ice instead. And when it's manufactured with power-sucking, snow-making machines, it's never quite the same. There's a reason we call it fake snow. We can't control it, but when it happens, it grips us, dazzles us, and in a way, calls us. So also for the growth of the church, as reported in the book of Acts. No one would have predicted that a small Jewish splinter group who followed a crucified Messiah whom they believed God had raised from the dead would grow as it did. Even those on the inside of the movement couldn't control it or forecast it. They were simply called and responded as they were led. Take Acts chapter 9, for example. This man, Saul, he goes from hating Jesus and his followers to loving them, serving alongside them, and becoming the foremost Jewish apostle to the Gentile nations. At first, Saul is on a self-appointed mission to make it snow. He wants to control his environment. He thinks he's doing it in service to God, but he ended up recasting God in his own image. But we shouldn't be too hard on him. We may not be hardline religious nationalists, but... Don't we find our own ways to manufacture a sense of calling, trying to serve some higher purpose? Saul would learn that nothing else matters if you're serving the wrong person, whether that's yourself or some other mere mortal, because none of us can make it snow. But Saul met the risen Jesus on the way, the Lord who makes the rain and the snow come down from heaven to water the earth and make it grow. See Isaiah chapter 55. And then there's Ananias and Barnabas, whom we also meet in Acts chapter 9. Ananias is the guy who's just ready for winter to be over. Saul was a walking blizzard, a surprise storm in Ananias' life. And initially, Ananias wants to steer clear of him. But Jesus calls to Ananias, go meet him. He's the one I've chosen. See Acts 9 verse 15. Later, after Ananias baptized him, the other Christians are suspicious of Saul. So Jesus calls on Barnabas. Now we hear about Barnabas several times in Acts. First, he's donating money to support the ministry in chapter 4. Then he's advocating for Saul in chapter 9. Then he's encouraging a multi-ethnic church in chapter 11. Then starting a missionary journey in chapter 13. Each time we see Barnabas, he's adjusting to the intrusions, adapting to the unpredictability, going with the flow. And it's the same for us. We too are called into this life with God, uncontrollable, unforecastable, joyful service from one season to the next. And sometimes, like Colorado in May, 
three seasons in a single week. Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, empower us to hear Jesus calling and respond in faith and love. Amen.